here's a few questions from chapter 15. <clears throat> For the first one, we have two reactants, A and B, with their concentrations and their rates at specific concentrations. And we want to see a couple of things. The first off is they give the rate of the reaction as the rate law, where K times the concentration of A to the X power times B to the Y power. We want to figure out what is Y, what is X, what is K, and then when the rate, uh, what is the rate under these concentrations. So first, we want to fill in this rate law. In order to do that, we want to figure out what is the dependence of the concentration on the rate. So if we look at run one and two, we have the rate or the concentration of A is constant at 0 0.1 molar and B doubles. So when B doubles and A stays the same, the rate also doubles. This means that B is a first order. So it is a direct proportionality of the concentration of B to the rate of the reaction. So we know that X equals one. For Y, we can take a look at what happens when B is constant and then A changes. So A doubles going from 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 and the rate also doubles. Therefore, A is also a first order. So the, the well, X and Y are one. Now for K, in order to solve for K, which is the rate constant, we can determine the rate. So rate equals K times the concentration of A to the one times the concentration of B to the one. Now we can plug in values for rate, concentration of A and concentration of B, and we can pick any one of them, either run one, two or three, and we'll use one. So the rate, which at run one is gonna be equal to 2.2 equals K, which is unknown, times the concentration of A, which is 0 0.01, times the concentration of B, which is 0 0.2. Then you can divide each side by 0 0.01 times 0 0.2, and our answer for K, 1,100. And since this is a second order rate law, the Units for K are one over seconds times one over molar, like that. Next question. For the reaction three Br O minus equals equals all of that, we have initial concentration of we have initial concentration of Br O minus is 0.86. At 65 seconds later, the concentration is 0.19. What is the rate of change? So the rate of change for Br O minus. It would just be the, the concentration two minus concentration one over the change in time. So delta, the change, you the change in BRO minus divided by the change in time is going to equal 0 0.19 minus 0 0.86. It's going to be a negative number, right? Because the BRO minus is being removed. And that makes sense. It's the reactant. And we're going to divide that by our change in time, which is 65. And our answer for our change in BRO minus over change in time is negative 0 0.0103. This is going to be molarity per second. The next question is asking, using the above conditions, what is the rate of the reaction? Now the rate of the overall reaction can be summed up by either the, it's, it's proportional to the rate of the removal of reactants or the rate of addition of products as the reaction continues. And it's based on concentration. So one of our identities for rate is rate equals negative one over the coefficient for the reactant times the change in the reactant concentration over time. So in this case, we have the rate is going to equal negative one over A. So A is our A is our coefficient of our reactant, which is three, times our delta, which we know already is 0 0.0 like that, and it'll be negative. So two negatives would make a positive. And then our rate is therefore going to be 3.43 times 10 to the negative third molarity per second. And this makes sense because if you have a lot of reactant, more moles 
higher mole ratio of reactant, then the reactant will be removed faster at a faster rate. But the overall rate of the reaction will be one third of the change in concentration of that reactant, which has a higher coefficient. Moving forward, calculate the half-life in seconds of a first order reaction if the concentration of the reactant is 0.0684 molar, 9.6 seconds after the reaction starts, and 0.0342 molar, 91.91 seconds after the reaction starts. So for this, we need to see that we have a first order rate law. So this can follow our first order integrated rate law right here. And we're looking for our half-life. Now, in order to find a half-life for our first order, we don't need the concentration initially. All we need is the rate constant. So once we find the rate constant using this equation, then we can figure out the half-life. So in order to figure out the rate constant, we can do a couple of things. So let's write down the equation the natural log of A equals negative KT plus the natural log of A0. And we don't know A0, but we do have two points at which we can calculate this integrated rate law. So the first would be natural log of our concentration, which is going to be 0 0.0684 equals negative K times our time, 9.6 seconds plus the natural log of A0. Our second equation is going to be natural log of 0 0.0342 equals negative K times 91.9, or 1, 91.1, plus the natural log of A0. And we can calculate both values of A0 and K using two equations and two unknowns, the system of equations. The first equation can be simplified to negative 2.68 equals negative K times 9.6 plus the natural log of A0. We can solve for the natural log of A0 by negative 2.68 plus K times 9.6 equals the natural log of A0, which could then be plugged into equation two. So we have our natural log of 0 0.0342 equals negative K times 91.1 plus negative 2.68 plus K 9.6. And we get negative 3.37. We can we can add the 2.68 to get negative 0 0.695 equals, we factor out the K there. So K my times negative 91.1 plus 9.6. And we can divide both sides and we can get K equals 0 0.0085. And this can be plugged into our half-life to figure that out, which would be the natural log of two over our rate constant. And that would be equal to 81.5 seconds. Now let's see if that number makes sense. Initially, you have this much reactant. 0 0.0684 then at around 9.1 91.1 seconds you have actually exactly half of that so this question could be done very easily which this is not always the case but you see how you get the same answer if you subtract these two numbers you get the same thing you get you get 81.5 and that makes sense because that is the amount of time it takes for the reaction concentration to reach half of its original value. But if they gave you a time point that was not exactly the point at which half of the original concentration occurred, this is the general way of how to do it. This is the best way to solve this problem. This exact problem is actually very simple, but doing it using the integrated rate law, two equations and two unknowns is 
the foolproof approach, which will always work as opposed to getting lucky here and assuming that, oh, the first concentration is, is double the original. Therefore, the difference in the times must be the half-life. It always, or it doesn't always work that way. For this problem we have, suppose the half-life is 35.7 seconds for a first order reaction and the reactant concentration is 0.0424 molar, 49.4 seconds after the reaction starts. How many seconds after the start does it take for the reactant concentration to get to 0 0.0193? For this, since it's a first order reaction and we have the half-life, we can directly find K because we don't need to know the initial concentration of A for that half-life for that reaction, for that rate constant. So we can plug this in as 35.7 equals 0 0.693 divided by, and we get our rate constant is going to equal 0 0.019. So now we have that, we can use our integrated rate law for the first order to figure out what the question is asking for. That's how many seconds after the start of the reaction does it take? for the reactant concentration to be, to, de to decrease to this. Now, in order to do that, we can figure out our initial concentration using our integrated rate law, using the first case, where we have our concentration to natural log of 0 0.0424 equals negative K, and we know K is 0 0.019, times our T, which is 49, 0.4 seconds plus the natural log of A. So we can figure out this natural log of A0, and we can figure out A0, but really the natural log is the most important thing, the, the entire term. So we can solve for that. And we obtain that the natural log of A0 equals negative 2.22. We can then solve the second part of the question saying how many seconds after the start does it take the reactant concentration to decrease to 0 0.0193 and we can use again the integrated rate law the natural law of 0 0.0193 equals negative k which is 0 0.019 times rt which is unknown plus the natural log of a0 which is we, now we know that term is negative 2.22. And we can solve for the time, which equals 90.93 seconds. That's not very clean, 90.93 seconds. Okay, moving on to the last one of this half unit. Determine the rate constant from the concentration time dependence. Now for this, we have time. So we want to figure out how does the reaction move with respect to reactant. Now the reaction, the reactant concentration is decreasing. And we want to figure out at what rate. If it's decreasing at a constant rate, that means it's going to be a, a zero order. But if it's decreasing at more than a constant rate or, or some kind of uh, curvature, we need to figure out what is going to be linear. And that's either one of these straight line plots that's in this chart right here. So if it was a zero order, you'd have the, a linear relationship between the concentration versus time of the reactant. If it was a first order, the natural log of the concentration, of reactant concentration versus time would be a linear slope. And if it was second order, one over the concentration would be a linear slope. So in order to do that, we need to figure out the rate of changes first. So the rate of changes of these, you know, to track the, to figure out, I'll give you an example to do one of them, 0 0.0223 minus 0 0.035 divided by the change in time, that's for this first segment here, and that's going to be 10 second, a 10 second segment, and I get negative 0 0.00127. Now we can do that for the second, third, and fourth segments, and I get negative 0. 0, 0, 0, 0.00081, negative 0. 0.00035, and 0. 0.00011. Okay, clearly these rates are not the same. Therefore, the reactant 
concentration versus time graph is not going to be linear. Therefore, it is not a first order. Now we can find the natural logs of all of these, or sorry, it's not a zero order. Now we can find the natural logs of these to figure out if the rates, if the, the reaction rate or the reactant concentration decrease rate is linear versus time. So now we can figure out, is the natural log of the reactant going to be linear? So we can do the natural log of these numbers and then figure out the change. So the natural log of 0 0.035. So when we solve for the natural log of the reactant concentrations, we have these numbers, negative 3.35, negative 3.8, negative 4.25, negative 5.59, and negative 6.5. So now we need to figure out, is the slope of this as the y and the time as the x, is that linear? So we can do the same thing as we did for just the raw reactant concentration. We can figure out the change here. So the change in this over time is going to be 0.45, divided by 10, which is 0 0.045 as our slope. Change here is going to also be 0 0.45 divided by 10, which is 0 0.45. This is going to be very similar to that. And I mean, if you could do the math then they'll be very similar. The fact that we have two slopes that are the same, that means this slope is not gonna change throughout the whole line. Uh, so then you have a linear slope for the natural log versus time. Therefore, it's a first order. Now, the question is determine the rate constant of this first order. So what we can do is we have time and we have reactant. We have our initial time, initial reactant concentration, and we have different time marks. So we can plug that into our rate law for a first order integrated rate law. Natural log of A, let's just pick at the 10 second mark, 0 0.0223 equals our rate constant times our time, which is 10 seconds, plus the natural log of A0, which A0 at time zero is 0 0.035. And we can solve for K and we get K equals 0 0.0451. So this one is pretty long, but first you gotta figure out what order it is because it doesn't always tell you and you cannot assume. So you have to figure out out of the graphs, for zero order, first order, and second order, those being the raw reactant concentration, the natural log of the reactant concentration versus time, or one over the reactant concentration versus time, which one of those is linear? That will tell you which rate law it is. And then from there, you can use the integrated rate law to solve for 